Good morning, everybody. I finished yesterday this book, The Abyss of Human Illusion by Gilbert Sorrentino. The reason I checked this out from the library was that Gilbert was on my mind because in a text chat, in a text group that I had with a lot of people, um, we were talking about the, um, the Dalkey Archive sale, and there was a Gilbert Sorrentino book, I think, on sale there. And then that made me think of Gilbert Sorrentino. It was only till I was like two thirds of the way through reading the book that I remembered that I did see Gilbert Sorrentino's name somewhere before, right here in the list of poets in the New American Poetry, which is a book that I got for free out of a bin outside of Frugal Muse a couple of years ago. The blurbs on the back are from Don DeLillo, Jeffrey Eugenides, Sam Lipsight, and Ben Marcus, three out of four of which I've read books from before. The author of this book is really in love with Henry James. Um, you can tell that because the title of the book is taken from a quote by Henry James, he sat and stared at the sea, which appeared all surface and twinkle, far shallower than the spirit of man. It was the abyss of human illusion that was the real, the tideless deep, which is a really badass quote. And I recently learned that every copy of the Golden Bowl in this Penguin edition with the gray spine has this little, I mean, many of them were had this little sticker on them where it says, Mobile Masterpiece Theater. So it's not just something really special about my copy. After reading it, I was thinking about reading Ice Haven, but then I realized that might be a little bit of overkill. But I feel like a lot of those comics that I was reading a lot in 2018 are also concerned with the abyss of human illusion, plumbing it, exposing it to some light. So like while reading this, I actually began work on my commonplace book. And one of the things I commonplaced was another line that was um, mentioning Henry James. This is, as suggested, not much of a story Although another writer, Henry James, for an ideal instance, might be attracted to its small cruelties and fatal ironies, sorry, faint ironies, and take it on. In addition to commonplacing while reading, I also kept one of my kind of indexes in the back with like favorite sections. There are a couple things I wanted to like, that are, that are here that I wanted to make sure to tell you about. The notes are really good. So one of the cool things about this book, it was Gilbert Sorrentino's last book, and it was given, like, the manuscript of it was handed to Gilbert Sorrentino's son, who then edited it and um, apparently just removed only a couple paragraphs and tried to change as little as possible. Um, but part of that was all these notes on each um, section, which can be very funny and which can be very, uh, like, I don't know, they can, be, they can be really funny and they can be really, um, they're really kind of just... The author rereading uh, the author's own work. Days of juicy fruit. The, f the flavor of this chewing gum has no relation to any fruit known to man. Not a scholarly detail, but a personal detail. This ride was much like the whip, rough and unsubtle. It's just like, it, it's really interesting. I've never seen notes like this in all my years of reading. And um, I think that this is kind of what made me remember the word postmodern while I was reading. Um, there was one that I thought was funny. Oh, here you go. A touch of the whore, a deliberately inflammatory phrase. Um, death is always standing on a quarter, sucking on a toothpick. I think I did, um, I think I did, uh, commonplace that. So the notes are special. Some, some of my favorite sections are here. If you end up, uh, what does that say? I can, I'm glad I can read Roman numerals. Tarantula. What? Translator. There was a bit of an anti-vegetarian bias at the start of 49, and 49 ended up being like my one of my least favorite sections. But a lot of my favorite sections were like five here. This one that's clearly a dream. The wife is being you know, like surrounded by guys and then a drone is emitted from her. There's another uh, section that is clearly a dream in several ways, um, like the way it it's just suddenly sexual in the way that it, like, it, it, it's from life, but it also doesn't obey any of the most basic logic of life. Like, his doctor, surprisingly, not his dentist, is doing something profoundly invasive in his mouth. It was really kind of gratifying to see such a use of dreams, uh, like such a plain, uh, you know, a portage of dreams into fiction. My dream diary, um, I've always thought about doing something like that. A little spoiler alert, there is a section in here that has subsections that are titled, but this is the only section like that. 
Um, and just one thing I wanted to say from the introduction that I think is important to understanding this book and the pleasure of reading it is that it does have a little form whereby the first sections are like a hundred words and then they go up to being um, a th about a 1300 words at the end, which is what, uh, by, by section 50, which is what the, um, uh, the introducer says. This is from 2009. I like what Coffee House Press does with their books. I like this contents page and this hat. Um, I wonder if that is Gilbert's hat. Um, this, re when I opened up this book, it made me think of Leaving the Atocha Station, which is another coffee house book that I have and like. I know I like what they do with Ben Lerner's stuff, and I, and I do like, <laughs> one character in this book is made fun of for calling their writing stuff. So may, may, remind me never to do that again. But uh, Faces in the Crowd, uh, Valeria Luiselli is like a coffee house press book that I, I'm always just like about to get to. Maybe I should start it today. Totally lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, so the introducer is the author's son. Well, it's not really an introduction, it's a note to the reader. Christopher Sorrentino, who I think has a new book out. Anyway, um, what uh, what Ben Marcus or, or Sam Lipsight says on the back about how the prose craft is really worth looking at is super true about this book there's a part in the book that i can't find now unfortunately where and is repeated um and and tell he wanted to find them and and tell them that something or other and i thought that was like it was unclear whether that was like a typo or a prose innovation i think it's probably one of those prose innovations i also liked the use of the phrase his his um their phrase um, in that, in the section about a writer who's interfacing with a new publisher called So-So, um, derogatorily, um, they, they, um, they have, like, they would publish something, their phrase, I, I like them saying, you know, they said they would publish his cutting edge, their phrase, work, or something like that. Anyway, just another little dispatch from the land of, 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 of books or whatever, and everybody have a good day of reading, and... Whatever you choose to read, um, I mean, if anybody has read any Gilbert Sorrentino books they like, I would be, I could be convinced to, to check out another one. So recommend one or, or something like that.